Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. Today, we're continuing our talks of Besom and anime. So, it's again, we're going to be talking about a number of different animes. I'll give a little review for them, and then tell you how to use them in your Besom game. I'll try to keep things when I'm talking on the Besom game side as much spoiler-free as possible, but there might be a few small spoilers in the way I'm explaining things. So let's just dive into it. The first two are going to be from, of course, the current season of anime. So the first one I'm going to start with from there is Servamp. Now, Servamp is set in a world where we have Miharu, who's a student that likes simple things. On his way home, he finds his black cat. He decides to save it. He calls it Kuro. Turns out that that black cat is a vampire named Ash. That this vampire turns into a cat when exposed to sunlight, and that he's one of these seven vampires that represent the seven deadly sins. Now, other vampires come and try to tussle with him effectively, come after him, and eventually Miharo is forced to come up to form this bond with Ash that causes him to become a servamp. So the two of them are then bonded together. He's a servant vampire, a servamp, and they meet with Subaki. Now, Subaki claims to be the eighth vampire of this group of vampires, who was the one that was sort of shunned out of the group and is out for revenge. So Subaki has a group that is working for him. So Miharu and Ash have to work together to get together the rest of the seven deadly sin servamps in order to fight back against Subaki. And that's the basics of the anime. So it's a pretty decent anime. Um, its genres are supernatural, of course. It's got vampires, ones with magical abilities, transforming abilities, things like that, that gives this supernatural element its action. There's a lot of combat between the servamps and the vampires and things like that that bring together enough action to keep it going. Now, I would also then, as sort of a subgenre of that supernatural, call it a vampire anime. There are a lot of animes that have vampires as a primary focus, so calling something a vampire anime is very good. It's an anime that focuses around vampires. Now, I do rate this one only a three. It's a pretty decent si series, but I don't watch it right away when I'm watching a series. I kind of wait a little. I'm not the biggest fan of some of the pacings of it, but it works out pretty well and does ramp up a little bit. So talking about it on your Bessem side, I'm going to say your characters will have 150 points. Now why? Because I think it would be better for your characters to be the Eves, the people that are bonded to Servamps. The Servamps, they have the basic ones that you might want to play already established, and making a character that's based upon another character is fun, but then it does take it away a little bit. And so what I'm saying is, because these are vampires are immortal, you could take it from a different point in time, or you could take it from the exact same point in time, is you make characters that are going to act as the Eves, the ones that are controlling and sort of manipulating the vampires. You act as more generals leading your troops into battle. So the characters themselves will not have as many roles, except for the out-of-combat things, but in the in-combat things, they're effectively going to be directing their NPC vampire in what to do and what abilities to use to sort of make it that their decisions are affecting the battlefield more than the own person's decisions. Now, once you have your team of Eves with all their Servamps, which again, you should have the seven deadly sins of Servamps, use them as you're going to. You're going to go against things like you could have it go against Tsubaki and her and his organization. That would be the easiest one to do because that's a lot of what's established. But you could also come up with dealing with other vampires, maybe other organizations like a hunting organization, things like that. They do mention one in the anime. You could have a different one. You could have another supernatural type creature show up. It wouldn't be out of the out of your mind for something else to exist in the world if there's already vampires that you could have other supernatural creatures show up and some kind of problem happen between them. And of course, you are going to have a little bit of that normal life for your Eve characters, and they're pretty much being drugged into the problems because of their bonded surveillance. So moving on to the other anime from this season, Time Traveler Girl. So this series focuses around Mari, who of course, Time travels. She time travels while looking for her father. Effectively, her father has disappeared some year, years ago and she hasn't seen or heard from him. And he's a genius inventor. So it turns out he invented time travel. In her quest to discover what happened to her father, she lead, it leads her meeting up with many historical figures and learning a few things from them, sort of journeying with them for a little bit. She's not the smartest person, but willing to listen and learn from these people. And along the way, she continues her quest to discover what happened to her father, where her father's been, that sort of thing. And her friends and people from the modern day help her out. She'll travel back and forth as she needs to along this journey. Now, the genres of this anime, it's of course a sci-fi. It's got time travel. It's kind of futuristic in that matter. 
It's also historical because she goes back to these historical time periods and gets immersed into them just a little bit. She like has to dress, learn a little bit about them, and in that way it's also educational. Now it's not like a greatly educational or made to be directly educational, but there's the little things that she learns about that we would also learn about too. Things like that that give it a little bit of education hidden in amongst what's going on here. The adventure of traveling and learning about these historical periods and also maybe learning a little bit about what these figures figured out. What kind of developments these people had and what their impact was upon time. Now I rate this one a four. I like things like time travel, I like historical type animes, and it brings in a little bit, and the educational part of it always gets me a soft spot. You know, that little educational bit makes me happy. Alright, so for your Bessem side, I would give your characters 130 points. You're gonna have them be time travelers. Your team will take the role of Mari in particular. It's effectively what Mari is as the central character is your team to the time traveling aspect of this anime. So this team will travel back in time and they will meet with historical figures, learning lessons, facing challenges that are revolving around the time periods they've gone into, that they have to find these people and then learn a little bit from them perhaps to get their, on their good side while learning what's happening on the overall plot. Which the overall plot, I would have them seeking someone similar to Mari seeking her father but you can have it come up with any way and you would have all the characters have some kind of relation to the character whether they're actually related and some of the characters might be siblings or relatives to each other or maybe one's a student or something like that that they have some kind of relation to this person so they're all traveling together in order to discover what happened to him and where he or she went in time and what they've been doing with time travel. Now, you could keep it very simple and keep it to the eight figures that sort of the anime revolves around. The number of figures is what I really mean. Or you could have as many figures that they have to visit as you want. You could add in figures. You could have a number which is appropriate to whatever kind of campaign or mini campaign you want to run. Now let's continue talking about some animes from the fall 2015 season because I was talking about them. I'm gonna introduce again two more from there. Let's start with One Punch Man. This is one that people really liked. It's really enjoyed. It's one that I would definitely recommend seeing above all else. So let's start talking about it now that I've given a blushing review of go and see this anime anyway. So we're setting around Z City. Now there are monsters and creatures and villains attacking Z City and heroes come together to battle against them. We are introduced to Saitama who defeats every one of his opponents with a single punch. Hence the title, One Punch Man. He is so overpowered that he just pfft, and he wins. And he's sort of a little bored with that in fact he always wins. He still does it, but he's got that kind of this, oh, yeah, I did it again attitude. He's just, you know, out of it that little, that he really wants to find some kind of challenge that he just doesn't win automatic. Now, at the beginning of the series, he has no respect. No one really recognizes him and things like that. Turns out, you have to be a member of the Hero Association. He joins that. He begins to earn some of that respect and recognition that he always kind of looked for. Though, because he's very plain looking and he has a sort of like blase attitude. A lot of the other heroes just sort of look down on him, even though there are some that recognize that he's incredibly ridiculously powerful and that like we really need his help for a lot of this stuff, but it's again, just the way he acts and looks, he just is looked down upon. And the fact is that when they learn what he did to train, which was very regular kind of things, he didn't do anything super special, he doesn't have superpowers, he's just some guy that trained a lot and eventually became ridiculously powerful. That's it. So it's sort of this weird kind of stupidity to his actual, like, why is he ridiculously powerful? But that drives us into the genres. Of course it's an action genre. There's superheroes battling monsters and aliens and villains. It is, of course, then a superhero anime. It has superheroes as the focus of them, that we're focusing on Saitama, who himself is a superhero. But it's a parody. It has a very par it has this very comedic sort of parody element to it. Because Saitama is supposed to represent all those ridiculous characters that are ultra powerful in a lot of animes or comics or things like that. And he's just regular. Of course, I rate this one a five. It's incredibly great. Now, as for having it in a Bessem game, I would recommend 500 points. 
you're not going to have one of your players be Saitama. You're not going to be ridiculous like that. You're going to be top-class heroes, though. That's effectively what you are. You're going to be a team of top-class heroes that works together to handle some of the problems that might be evolving in C Z City or any other series. cities. Dealing with monsters, aliens, villains, things like that. Battling it out in order to be heroes. Now, what Saitama will be is he will be in your game and he will effectively be this force of nature coming along. So if your heroes need help, maybe he'll show up. Maybe something's going on that he's fighting something in the background and you have to fight the other stuff. It will effectively be a plot point that he exists and that he does things. And you could use some of the other very top class heroes to represent some of this too, that you can bring them in to sort of balance out the team, but your team will be effectively other heroes set in this universe. So let's move on to the last one I want to talk about today, Utawa Rademono, or in particular the one that's referred to as the False Faces. Now, Utawa Rademono is a series of manga, of anime, of novels, of material, of games, that sort of come together. But I'm focusing primarily on the anime ones, and particularly the anime one that came out in this season. Now, our, our opening episode comes with this guy show, waking up in the cold, in the snow, confused, not knowing who he is, what he is, anything like that. He gets chased by a monster. He gets saved by Kuan. This girl with animal ears, because apparently everybody but our main character here that we have has some kind of animal ears or animal characteristics. And he's been named, saved by her, and he begins to accompany her, and she calls him Haku. So Haku is our main character, and he seems like a normal human, while everybody else seems different. So Haku goes with Kuan, and they eventually travel into the depths of this empire that they're in, and they get involved with the empire. Haku, sort of with his way of doing things, being the nice guy a little bit, attracts this group of people around him, that they're just friends and allies, that they work together. It's not quite to the level of a harem, I am going to say that now, even though there are a lot of girls on his team. It's more that they have their own relationships, own people they like, but they like him as a great friend. Some of them have some interest in him, but not really in the same degree that I would give it at harem term. But anyway, so Haku then gets involved in a lot of what's going in the Empire, with conflicts going on, with bandits, things like that, that he meets a lot of these very important people, and he becomes a figurehead himself, in a way, because of his mounting relationship with what's going on. And of course, he's kind of lazy, he just wants to relax, but he keeps being dragged into situations that being a nice guy, or being a guy who thinks that things should be done right, he gets involved in them, even though he just would rather relax and he's constantly being given jobs by Kuan to go do this and earn some money around a town, that he just does a lot of odd jobs. So the genres of this one, of course, adventure. They do a lot of traveling, kind of that adventurous traveling around a world, going to interesting places, ending up in interesting places where they have to get involved with things in a way that it's an action. Haku himself has, like, no combat abilities, but a lot of the people around him have incredible combat abilities and get into these awesome fights, and there's these epic battle scenes that occurs. There are wars that occurs, that you have these awesome battle scenes. Now, I'd also call it a fantasy. It's a fantasy because, of course, you have all these strange animal-like humans, but you also have this powers and abilities that some of them have that seem almost supernatural. Some of them can turn into giant monsters that are supposed to be the sort of monsters of the empire. So you have this like energy to it that is feels very fantasy even though it also has this uniquely Japanese feel to it that looks a lot like ancient Japan and just the generalized appearance of it. Now I rate this one a four. It's a great series. It's pretty decent. I will say I did not really enjoy the ending of it. I I didn't. It's um I feel like the ending was just not great. I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but I feel like they got to a point in time where they did end the series, but they ended it on a very negative note that they didn't need to. They could have kept it a little bit more positive. It's more like you can never have what you ever want kind of feeling, but you didn't need to have that feeling. I'm not going to explain any more to avoid spoilers, like get to the end. It's a very good anime to watch through to the end, but I just have to say, not a big fan of the ending. 
So let's move on to talking about using it in your Besom game. So I'd say give your characters at least 200 points, maybe up and towards 250, depending on what kind of power level you want to give them. You're going to keep it a team of people that are effectively working for the Empire or working around with what's going on in the Empire. They could deal with bandits, rebellions, invading armies, things like that that they could give relief to. Maybe they're not part of a direct military force, but they could be sent on little missions and stuff yet. So it's based around that mission-based idea of whatever is going on in the Empire at the time. And you can mimic the anime as much as you want or come up with your own storyline. Your team of characters will, of course, have people that have incredible techniques or possibly powers. And, of course, you might have someone that's similar to Haku who's more of a strategist or the intelligence, brain, charismatic sort of guy in the center of it. You could have a character like that. You don't necessarily need to. You could have it all very action heavy. Whatever balance of the team you want is going to be up to your players. So that's it for today. I went over these four anime. I talked about using Sir Vamp and their vampires. I talked about Time Traveler Girl and traveling through time. One Punch Man and being a superhero. And of course, Utuwarare Meno, that you're some kind of that you're a fighting force for an empire or at least a mission-based force for one so if you have any questions comments anything you want to say anything you think i left out please leave in the comments below please like share and subscribe shows your support for the channel the empire and the work i do and until the next time i bid you farewell